Today I'm gonna explain the whole process of creating an image from the very beginning to the end. Ali and this channel is all about making you better in Photoshop. Today's edit is gonna be a little bit lengthy, but we're gonna explain everything in details. You can find the stock images in the description below, you can download them and follow along, there are a lot of photos. We'll start off by creating a new document, usually I go 4000 by 5000, but in this case I'm gonna go 2000 by 2500, which is the same ratio, but less so the file goes faster. Okay, we have our canvas here. Let me fix a few things first. Okay, we're good to go now. Now these are the images we're gonna use. This is our canvas. I'm gonna start by dragging the first sky. The first thing I do is adding the skies. You have to decide the mood you're gonna go with of the image. Okay, this is the first one. I wanna go something like purplish color, some sunset photo, something like that. So I added this first photo, then I'm gonna add this second photo. I want my sky to be a little bit interesting, not just one photo or something like that. So I'll make this one smaller, I'll put it somewhere here. I don't want to hide the sun, I'm just overlapping it. I'm gonna change it to overlay. Make sure you rasterize your layers. Okay, this one is overlay now. Just a minute, I need to find my mask. Okay, I'm gonna add a layer mask on top of it. Then I'm gonna go to the brush. I'm gonna press right click. I'm gonna use my fog brush. You can find these brushes. I'm, they're also gonna be linked in the description. And using black color. Oh, that's too much. I'm just using black color. I'm just gonna get rid of some areas and the edges, leaving this cloud only. Okay, control T, I'll make it a little bit bigger, something like that. Okay, that's the first sky. Let's drag another one. Let me take this one, the rays. I really like this sky, I like the rays here. So I'm just gonna flip it horizontal. I want the rays to be coming from that side to this side. So I'm gonna put it somewhere here. Again, overlay, rasterize it, add a layer mask. Then using the same dark brush, just get rid of the edges. I'll make it even smaller. I need to get rid of uh, these trees down there. So now I'll put it below. Yes, okay. So now that the rays are coming from that cloud. Okay, one thing you can do, you press Ctrl M. You increase the shadows or maybe decrease something like that pull it up now increase increase the shadows will make it more invisible and same for here it's not over yet but we're still gonna fix it and lower the opacity of course let me try this one in screen oh no screen is horrible overlay is good okay uh, we have one more sky, the sun one here. Okay, this one is gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm gonna put this one actually to linear dodger screen. I'm gonna try. I want this sun here to be somewhere here where the light is coming. So I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna add a layer mask. Make sure it's rasterized. On the layer mask, I'm gonna take the brush. And with the black color, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna actually press control backspace because the black here is my second color control backspace it's invisible then using white I'm just gonna bring back the sun area then using black I press X to switch between colors black will erase white will keep and lower the opacity so here we have our source of light they need 
some color adjustments to blend them together but it's fine for now I'm gonna group them and let's start drawing our idea okay now I have a new layer I'm gonna draw with the lasso tool I want some sort of a mountain okay the thing is you don't have to draw perfectly from the beginning it's fine if, if it looks like shitty or something so I'm just drawing some sort of a mountain here okay this is my first mountain I'm gonna add a new layer usually I like to work with the color here open it makes it much faster let's put it here okay and paint okay we have here our first mountain the second mountain is gonna be somewhere here make sure every single one is on a separate layer and a new layer for the last mountain it's gonna be somewhere here something like that and there we go let's put this one behind so this are this is their sequence this one is the furthest behind, this one is closer, this one is the closest. I'll make this one a little bit bigger. Something like that. Okay, this is when you start fixing your photo. That's why I said it's not important to have them right, but it's very important to start. This is really important when it gets to art. Most people are stuck, they are thinking like which composition is better, this one or that one. But the most important thing is just lay down your composition, lay down the elements, lay down the mountains, and then use your eyes, look at them, and fix them. Okay, let's take this mountain. Okay, let me draw more so we can, like, see better. This is... This was actually, like, the idea that I wanted from the beginning. Okay, this is the idea. We have some sort of a path here, which is leading this way, behind that mountain, and it's joining with this mountain. So this one, I need to make it bigger. I'm gonna right-click work. I need to make it a little bit fatter, something like that. This one, let's make it even fatter and shorter. And this one... Let's warp it, something like that. Then control T and pull it up a little bit. I can always check how my composition looks through the navigator. This is the navigator. I usually keep it open. This is like to take a further look from how your composition look like. Let me close the sky. Take a look. This is how it's gonna look like. You have some sort of a path here. Here we have our main object, but I find something which is like a bit annoying. This one is a bit, there's a, like a perspective error. So I'm going to control T and pull it down. Stretch it like that. So we don't have perspective issues. And let's even fix it more. I believe it's like too fat than going too narrow which isn't realistic because it's not that far away it's a small path something like that is good and of course let me control click this one to make a selection of it then stand on that layer and just press backspace so it's deleted because it's going behind of it so it's natural that we can see okay this is how it's gonna look like take a look at the navigator I'm gonna close it because it's taking like area of my canvas okay I guess we're done with the uh, we have a problem we have some parts here not covered by the sky so I'm gonna make the sky bigger something like that the sky is important to have at the beginning you don't have to have the sky before these you can do them first then do the sky but I like to, to work from back to front First you adjust the sky so you can adjust the values and the colors based on the sky you're gonna use. Okay, let me do some, let's start with the sky. Let's do some fixations to the sky. This one, which is the main one. I don't like the blue, the blue is too strong. So I'm gonna press Control U. And let's take the cyans or the blues. 
make sure you're targeting the blue and the cyan together and just increase the lightness you see it's going bright and let's move it until it's in the color range we want if it's hard to find the color range pump the saturation 100 percent so you can see the color i want it somewhere here in the orange bring the saturation back and a little bit of lightness to make it bright okay so now we have our first sky you saw it was like blue now it's orange now this one it looks good okay this one it has some dark areas very dark areas so i'm gonna press ctrl m and i'm gonna take the black parts just pull them up i don't want to have any like black areas in my photo and then this one is the final one let's make it a little bit bigger i hold ctrl and alt when making bigger and smaller so it gets bigger from the center which is the pivot, po pivot point let's make it something like that okay here we have this is the first one it looks a like it's burned a little bit so i'm just gonna make it bigger move it up a little bit something like that move it up okay and if you still have burns you don't like i'm gonna go to the like the dodge and burn the dodge then i'm gonna go to the highlights and i'm just gonna dodge these parts a little bit so they are brighter and okay we're good okay let's get started with the mountains i'm gonna start by dragging the first photo let's start with this one like i said i like to work from back to front okay let's put it on top of everything like that i like to make it a little bit smaller this is important i'm gonna tell you why don't make sure like me don't make it like 100 percent a little bit smaller then using the quick selection tool i'm just gonna make a very quick selection this one is easy to cut because this is dark the sky is bright make sure it's rasterized and after you make your selection press add layer mask it gave you the opposite of what you wanted so you just press ctrl i and you have what you want okay let me take a brush now you see now why i told you to make it a bit smaller because now you'll have these edges you need to get rid of i'm gonna take a brush just a black brush and i'm just gonna brush the edges away here and there then i'm gonna apply layer mask so now we have this layer we have some problems here i need to delete these like blue between the trees so i'm gonna go to select color range and then i'm gonna select this blue make sure you're not like 200 and not something low you can check here in this area where like the white it's is what it's gonna select so i just need a little bit of this white and okay so it gave me a selection of what i want so now i'm just gonna take the eraser don't press delete because if you press delete i'll show you you see it has a lot of selections down there so if you press delete it's gonna remove them as well but instead use the eraser and just erase from only the top and i pressed backspace to bring the selection back again and Control d once you're done and here we have our mountain let's make it a little bit bigger and let's make it as much as we can matching the one behind we have okay so now we have a mountain let's put it on top of the layer we have oh it's not uh, completely down let's pull it a little bit down so it's covering the whole thing okay oh it's not covering from the left i'm gonna make it a little bit just wider okay so now it's covering this one completely okay after i i got this one what i'm gonna do is this is my initial sketch you see the selection i'm gonna try to make this one as close as possible to it so if i click here only these parts need to go a little bit to the inside so i'm gonna press on work and I'm just gonna pull these ones a little bit to the inside and okay something like that it needs to be from here narrower okay once you're done and you like it this is really important I'm gonna close this one for now then I'm gonna stand on this one I'm gonna use my brush hold alt and click to sample the color of this one then I'm gonna press ctrl click 
Now I have a selection of the mountain I just added and I'm gonna alt backspace to color. So now this one is exactly the one on the top of it. Okay, why I did that, I'm gonna tell you now. I'm gonna put this one into overlay. Okay, you see what happened when I changed it to overlay? It got a little bit darker because the one behind is a little bit dark. So I'm, I need to make it so that whenever you use overlay, it doesn't get darker nor brighter. So I'm gonna go brightness and contrast, brighten a little bit. This is the one below. Now I'm brightening and like darkening this one, not the overlay. Okay, let's try now from overlay to normal. A little bit brighter. Let's go back again to this one. Adjustments, brightness, contrast, a little bit brighter. Let's try now from overlay to normal. Almost the same. Okay, it's good now. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but almost the same is good. Okay, so now why I did that, like why I just don't change that to normal and close the one behind, I don't need it. This is because this gives you a control of how much detail you want. So when I lower the opacity of this one, you see I'm getting the mountain but with less detail. If I increase the opacity, I'm getting the mountain with more detail. This is very important and let's group these two together and let's call it mountain on left. Okay, let's jump to the one in the middle. I'm gonna alt tab, I'm gonna, uh, which one I'm gonna use? Let's, we need one of these because it's in the middle. So I'm thinking this one or that one. This one is bigger, so it's gonna be better. Okay, let's go to this one. Something like that. I'm gonna press Control J, then just delete the main layer. So I have this one. Now I'm gonna get rid of this at the bottom here. And let's go to select color range. This one, click, go to the eraser. And again, let's erase the sky in between the trees here and there. So now we have our second one. Let's now make it bigger. When you make it bigger, it's losing a little bit of its like resolution, but it's okay. It's not so close to the camera, so it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, let's make it like that. Okay, now the same thing I wanna do again. I'm gonna change this to overlay, but this should be exactly the same. So I'm gonna control click to get the same selection. Stand on this layer, Alt, uh, stand on the brush, Alt click to sample the color, then Alt backspace to color. Okay, we have now the same color, but there are some pieces that could be extra. So I always go to select inverse, then press delete. So if there is anything extra, it gets deleted as well. So this one is here overlay, let's try normal. Let's try overlay. You see it's getting darker. This means this one is dark. So let's go to image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. And let's brighten it up a little bit. So now we have the second one. Let's group them together. Let's call it mountain middle. Okay. Which one is that? I don't know what layer is that. What is doing here? So this one is sky. This is mountain left, mountain middle. Okay, it's time for the mountain right. Let's pull a different image. Let's pull this one, for example. This one will work nice because we already this one is already a mountain in the right part of an image. So it won't be causing trouble. I hold Alt and right click to make it bigger and smaller. Alt, right click. This is one of the most important hotkeys that I see many people not using. It makes your workflow a lot faster. Okay, and once I'm done, I'm gonna add a layer mask. I'm gonna rasterize this one, then apply layer mask. So now we have this layer here. Let's make it bigger until it's matching this one. Okay, like that. We're gonna face a little bit problem here. As you see, I'm gonna add a layer mask. Then I'm gonna go to the brush. This brush is really important. I really like it. Make sure you download my brush pack, it's gonna be in the description below, this one. With the black color, I'm just gonna erase, like that. So this makes it look realistic. You're erasing with a, like a tree brush, so it makes sense. 
okay apply layer mask then i'm gonna go to select color range and i'm gonna sample this blue okay then using the eraser i'm just gonna erase this blue here and there behind the trees okay okay it's time to do the same let's control click this one let's take the brush let's sample this color let's alt backspace okay you see it gives us what we want but we have extra parts here that's why we go to select inverse and then backspace to delete the extra parts let's open this one now and let's put it on overlay oh it's getting a lot darker so this means this one is very dark we need to brighten it up a little bit something like that let's see the normal still going darker a little bit of brightness and we're good okay so now we have three photos one thing i did for this tutorial i meant to choose these three photos as you can see this one it has like some yellow tones this one is blue and desaturated and cool this one is gray i chose these three photos on purpose just to make it like more hard and tricky so we can teach you how to match them together let's call this one mountain on right what layer is that i don't know what keeps on creating some weird layers i'm gonna delete that and we have the path the last thing is the path okay let's grab a texture uh this one maybe and i'm gonna rasterize it and using my eraser i'm just gonna delete i get the eraser by pressing the button e and just delete like that this is gonna be fun i'm gonna show you how to make textures out of like very weird images this is an image let's erase the top part then i'm gonna stretch it out like that this is by holding control alt and shift you stretch it out from here and there make it like that pull it again let's flip it around something uh, no let's not flip it let's do it like that and just erase parts of the edges something like this something like that let's control e to merge them together let's put it on top control click add layer mask and then change that to overlay too dark because this one is too dark so adjustments brightness contrast and brighten it up so let's see this one when we change to normal not a big difference so we're good so we have the texture now here you see we have a problem here with it so i'm gonna go to the clone stamp tool make sure you're on current layer i'm gonna alt click from here we're sampling from here and we're just coloring here let's sample let's make it like just random weird shapes i know it looks horrible now but it's fine so now we have it okay let's reduce the opacity a little bit okay now we're done with the easy part just cutting and putting everything together the hard part is gonna start now it's the part where it's like most challenging we need to make everything matching together okay the question that many people ask so should we make this one blue like that one far away or should we make that one far away orange like that one here this is completely depending on the sky we're using so we're using an orange sky so this one is the right tone so this one needs to be orange okay let's start with this one okay it's an overlay let's reduce the opacity a little bit that's why i have the overlay one down here you see okay then let me press ctrl b let's go add some red some yellow more red let's jump to the highlights add some red and yellow in the shadows let's try blue the shadows are usually opposite of the color okay good but still not perfect let's add a layer let's alt click to link it below let's take an orange color some thing here or you can just using the brush hold alt and just sample color of the light here and let me take just a normal brush make it big and let's just 
color something like that and change it to overlay and reduce the opacity you see this layer it added some sort of light coming here okay this part is really important let's close these now I'm only gonna color on this one but if I take a color and I color you see it's coloring outside so I lock transparent pixel this one when you press it and you color it's only coloring on the layer so now we have our layers you see what's happening when we color on the layer below it's important okay but now I'm gonna use like any brush which has some texture to it like something like that is gonna be good actually but I'm gonna use this one this one you see how it looks like just some sort of texture but I'm gonna use a very low flow and I'm gonna change the blending mode to overlay and I'm just gonna let's add more color and less opacity I want it to be very subtle you see what I'm doing here I'm just adding some details of highlight at the edge because the Sun is here the light source is here so it should have some sort of light hitting from that side so let me sh oh we won't have a before and after in this case let's choose a different color something more reddish and let's that's something very bright And let's put it. You see this? It, it made like made you feel like there is light hitting here. We can also do something different. So we finish this mountain completely. Let's take a brush. And let's take a dark cyan blue. And now this is like the shadows. This is the dark area. So this mountain now looks actually good. It looks like there is light hitting from that side. We can even try to enhance it even more. Let's add another layer. Link it by holding Alt click. Let's change the blend. Let's leave the blending mode for now. And let's sample a color from here. A bright orange color. And let's see what's gonna happen when we paint with it. Just two stripes of color. I believe it needs a little bit more color. So simply press Ctrl U and increase the saturation. And this is these two layers. You see what they did? They added some sort of like light from this side. I believe it's too strong. So I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit of this one and that one. So these two layers, they added light from that area. Okay. We're good with that mountain. It's looking good so far. We can always also play around with the opacity. Make it like look much clearer or make it look further away. This is the importance of having it on overlay and playing around with it. I'll stick with like 70%. That's good. Let's close mountain on left for now. And let's take mountain in the middle. Let's lower the opacity. I believe this one is too contrasty and too colorful compared to the environment. So I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. And also I'm going to press Ctrl U. This will open the hue saturation. In this case, I'm going to jump to the yellow. And I'm just going to reduce the saturation a little bit. Because this area was too saturated. Okay. Let's take the layer down. Make sure you're locking the transparent pixels. Let's choose the bright orange color again. And let's just paint over the edges here and there. Let's make it even brighter. Because the sun should be hitting the edges only in this case the sun is behind so only the edges should be colored then let's take the dark blue and let's color that's too dark and let's color this area with it okay let me try reducing the opacity a little bit or no let's increase the opacity but then let's add a layer on top and link it and let's try again the orange color in this case using normal just a little bit of brightening here and there okay let's close mountain middle let's jump to a mountain on the right this one this one needs like this one is very close to the camera so I'm gonna keep it to 100% opacity and also I'm gonna press ctrl M this will open the curves 
I want this one to be uh, yeah, it, like you can see it's looking something like that but of course I don't want it to be like completely burned out like that so I'm just gonna make sure it's a little bit more contrasty than the others this is like the black points I make the black points a little bit up because I don't want stuff to be completely black and then I take the mid tones here and just make them a little bit darker like that and then control U let's take the yellows bring them down too colorful here and we can reduce the opacity a little bit okay good and what else could we do let's add a layer let's link it let's take the orange color we have and let's just color on the edges I'll do it like a bit strong then change it to overlay okay this is the effect okay and this is mountain one right okay we have our facing a problem here we need to make them look like they're separated I need to make this one look like it's close to the camera this one is far this one is the farthest so I'm gonna in between them on top of mountain on middle add a new layer then I'm gonna take my brush I'm gonna use a fog brush I have here you see what happened when I do something like that this looks now close this one looks back but of course I'm gonna add like a fog in a random way you can also use some cloud brushes So we have some sort of cloud here and there and I also always like to go to like strong with the effect and then reduce the opacity let's right click give this one orange so we know which one is the fog here okay so now we created some sort of separation but still needs more separation so I'm gonna control click this layer and I'm just gonna control M and make it darker something like that now it looks close to the camera compared to the ones behind okay let's try the hundred percent too strong okay let's take this one make it a little bit stronger uh, now still let's take this one and let me add some clouds here and there we need to show like they are separated okay lower the opacity a little bit I believe the clouds is too strong let's take the eraser and just erase with low opacity some here and there okay let's take the mountain at the back this one on top of it add a layer and just brush in some clouds so it looks like it's far away from the camera and you can always oh, not that one lower the opacity to make it more faded making it look like it's more further to the background okay <clears throat> we're good for now it's time to do the like the land part this one is gonna be a little bit hard I'm gonna draw actually on this one I'm gonna lock it and then I'm gonna take a brush let's take uh, I don't know which brush to use let's take this one again the one with the texture and let's st like start adding some texture with different color and let's see what's gonna happen I'm gonna just sample different colors here and there just random textures this one is too strong I'm gonna control U and lower the saturation darken it strongly and control M I don't want complete black parts so I'm just gonna pull this one up sorry pull this one up and pull this one completely down something like that so we don't have very dark areas so this is like the overlay okay then this one let's start painting over it to make it look more realistic and let's do something let's take that mountain let's drag it on top of everything here put it to normal let's pull it down stretch it out something like that no that's too strong I guess 
Okay, let's try. I like like to keep trying. I'm gonna hold Alt and pull this one on top of it. So we add the layer mask and let's put this one to overlay or soft light. Overlay is good. But we need to brighten it. Control M and just a little bit of brightness. So now it looks like it's a little bit muddy or something like that. Uh, I need these three. Control G to group. Let's call this one path. I need to put the path down here so it's behind this layer okay I guess we're good with the path but one thing I need to do is dodge and burn let's take the shadows and we need to dodge the parts far away because the more it goes far away the less contrast it's gonna have so I'm dodging the parts back there so it fades in with the mountain behind Okay, uh, one thing I need to do, let's take this path, let's pull it down a little bit, make it bigger. Pulling it down to adjust the perspective. Yeah, something like that is good. Okay. So we have our path here, it's very sharp edge, this is a problem, so I'm just gonna stand on the masks, use a brush, get the grass brush that I was using, make sure it's on white, and you see what's happening, oh 100%, and when I use it, it's gonna do some sort of an, uh, an edge, grass edge, something like that. Well, these details are really important. They do the difference, actually. And let's on this one. Okay, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna control click. Now we have the selection. Let's stand on this one. Make sure you're painting with white. On this one, paint with white. And on this one, I'm gonna alt click it to solo it. And stand on the layer. S for the clone stamp. Alt click and add. Okay, we have this locked, so I'm gonna unlock it first. Alt click. Then just adding texture in the areas, additional areas. And I'll click again to unsolo it. So now we have the like the grass. We don't have the sharp edge anymore. We have some sort of a better, more realistic edge. Okay. Now what's missing? I'm gonna press C, click. I always do that to see my thirds. This is the third. Also, when you have the delete crop pixels and you press yes, this makes your file much faster because it deletes everything in the surrounding. Yes? Okay, so now the file is much faster. Okay, I don't know why this... We have some sort of these black areas. It's coming from that layer. Uh, okay. Let's solo it. Oh, this one. Let's... Add with the clone stamp. Okay. So now we have our path. Oh, the path should be in front of this one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this one on top. But now we have a problem. It's overlapping that one. So I'm gonna control click this one. And on the path, I'm gonna add a layer mask. So now we have the opposite of what we want. Control I. So now... Oh... Now I'm gonna, oh, okay, I'm gonna paint with white here to bring that area back. Okay. So now what we did, we erased it from behind this one and we got it back from here. Okay. I want to blend the path a little bit with the whole environment or with this mountain actually. I believe the path is too like contrasty. So this one is bringing the contrast, so I'm gonna control M, reduce the contrast by pulling the blacks up and pulling the whites down. Again on this one, control M, pulling the blacks up, pulling the whites down. And on this one also, control M, pulling the blacks up, pulling the whites down, that's too much. Okay, this one is good, but it's too dark and it's going and it's not fading when it goes back. So let's on top of the path add a layer on top make sure it's on top alt click to link it and let's take a color from here 
and with a soft brush let's paint over let's take color actually from here also and I'm just sampling colors and painting over it just so I blend it better okay so this is what we made and one of them should be actually bright something like that because there is light hitting let's put it to overlay and let's oh no it looks fake okay I'm, I'm good with that okay let me take a look this one is too green this one doesn't have the same color so let's take this one let's press ctrl b Oh, I press Ctrl M, sorry, Ctrl B for color balance. Let's go to the shadows and add some blue. Oh, now it's fixed. Okay. It needed some blue to blend in with everything. Okay. Now we're good. Let's jump to the next step, which is gonna be adding the model and everything here. I'm gonna use this one. It's like some sort of column. You see what I did? I did a mistake here. I added it between the layer and the link. So the link is now on top of it. So when I put it on top, I'm going to lose the link. You see? So you have to press Alt and link it back again. I'm going to open this one. I'm going to use this one. And layer via copy. And delete this one. Okay. So I have this one. This is from uh, Deviant Art actually. You can find its owner. And I'm going to link him in the description below. And then I'm gonna delete this one. Let's put this column here. And let's put another column there. Uh, I don't want them to be identical. Why is this one different from that one? Let me put them on top. Okay, because it had some fog on top of it. I need them to be a bit different. So this one I'm gonna control T and then warp it. I don't want them to be completely identical. And this one a little bit smaller. So they look a little bit different. And then I'm gonna pull this one. I'm gonna select the top part. Here, like that. And Control J and then I'm gonna delete this one and let's try to blend these two together. Let me put it on top first Let's flip horizontal Oh, it has some perspective issues Let's put it like that It looks like it's falling behind Let me using the lasso tool, I'm gonna fix every part on its own. This one needs to be like that, and then this one. Needs to join. Okay, so now we join them. But we need to delete from here like that and from there like that and delete so now it looks better it looks more blended but this one as you can see there is difference in the colors of both so I'm gonna m first these two I'm gonna merge them so they are one then control M I'm gonna brighten them up a little bit then control U and lower the saturation. This one control M. I'm gonna darken and brighten. Brighten from the shadows. Darken from the highlights. Brighten from the shadows. And then this one also I'm gonna darken a little bit. So they are more matching. And then I'm gonna merge them together. Control E. Now they are one layer. This is the gate we're gonna use. Then control B. For some colors in the shadows add some blue and cyan in the highlights add some yellow and red so this blends them even better together okay one thing we need to do is flip horizontal I forgot to do that and 
let's pick this one fix it a little bit and erase apart from here because the light is coming from the right and we have the shadow here on the left so i had to flip it horizontal okay so now after we did that we need them to like even become better so i'm gonna create a new layer on top of them then i'm gonna take a brush in this case i'm gonna use this texture again i'm gonna sample some green color i'm gonna change this one to overlay and i'm gonna paint on top of them just adding some texture here and there if this green is not so good you can always change it i believe it's too colorful so control u and reduce the saturation and make it darker reduce saturate or leave saturation and make it darker so now you see what we did we created some sort of texture on top of it let's add a new layer also link it below take a brush this time i'm gonna use a crack brush here make sure i'm on a very dark color and i'm just gonna add some cracks here and there You can like rotate it uh, around so it doesn't look like you're doing some repetition. Some cracks here and there to show this is an old building or something like that. Okay, so now we're good. We have these three. Let's call it, group it and call it the gate. Okay, the only part missing, I don't like this. It's, it looks really bad. So I'm gonna merge this one like uh, alt and click to copy it. Then I'm gonna take the lasso, delete this one, control T, flip it horizontal, and I'm gonna put this one here, but I'm gonna delete this and that. Oh, I'm not 100%. You gotta make sure you're 100%. I'm gonna put this one here. I'm gonna merge it with that one. You have to unlink first, then merge, then link. Okay, so now it's much better. I didn't like the part on the left before. Okay, we have our gate here. We need to like make the gate more realistic with the ground. I'm gonna make it smaller. Then I'm gonna take the ground, this one. I'm gonna take the dodge and burn. I'm gonna burn shadows. If you're on dodge and you click, you're dodging. If you hold alt and click, you're burning. So I'm gonna stick with the dodge and I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna burn some parts here and there let's burn some areas let's add some interest to it and let's I'm, I'm leaving alt now to dodge some areas holding alt now to burn leaving alt to dodge this creates some sort of variation in the texture okay holding alt and burning i'm doing on the separate layers to see the effect on everyone by itself Just doing some random dodges and burns and just I'm gonna just add a layer make sure I'm on black color and I'm gonna take the normal brush but I'm gonna just squeeze it down like that so that I'm gonna paint black and then I'm gonna take the column itself which is this one I'm gonna jump to the dodge and burn make sure you're burning by holding alt on mid tones and I'm just gonna burn the bottom area. I need it to be dark, something like that. So now it's blending, but this is too strong. I'm just gonna lower its opacity. Okay, so now it looks blended much better. Okay, now let's fetch our model. Uh, just a second, I'm gonna find the photo. This one. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to separate from the background. We need to do it like the manual way. First, I'm just I just do that. Then Control G and delete the first one. So now we have like a smaller area. Then I take the pen tool and just go all around. 
I'm doing it really quickly for the tutorial. You can do it much slower for better like quality. But when you're gonna like place your model very small in the photo, you don't have to be super accurate because the eyes won't be able to see. Again, I'm like doing it really quickly. And if you make a mistake, you can press control to move the points. And there we go. Let's ignore the hair for now. And we're gonna face a little bit problem here with the hands, but I'm just gonna make it like that, okay? And after you close selection, right click, make selection, okay, layer mask, okay, we have this one, but we have still the hair, so I'm gonna take a brush, make sure it's like normal 100%, and I'm gonna take a hair brush, I have, it's not hair brush, it's grass brush actually, but I use it for hair, make sure it's black. And I'm just gonna erase I'm gonna try another brush This one doesn't work nice Let's try this one It's okay if it's not perfect Like I said we're gonna put her like very small in the environment, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's apply layer mask. So now we have our model here. Let's make her smaller. Let's flip her horizontal so she's running to that side. Let's make her something like that. The smaller sh you make her, the bigger this one looks like. Okay, even smaller like that is good. Okay, now I want to give her color. I don't like the white dress. So I'm just gonna jump to hue saturation, link it below, press colorize. And I'm just gonna go something extreme, something like that. So I can see. Now I'm gonna just take a brush, a normal strong brush. And I'm gonna erase everything except the dress by painting black. I keep changing between white and black by pressing X. This is really important to get used to. Okay, so now we're only affecting the dress. It's very clear. Okay, let's now give it a color. Uh, I like the dark red, the purplish red, something like that. Okay, but it doesn't look good because it's on white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a layer, curves adjustment layer. And I'm gonna hold Alt and pull the same mask on top of this one. So now I'm affecting only the dress again. And now I'm gonna make it much darker, not completely white, something like that. So the color looks better. As you can see now, you see the color of the dress. So instead of putting the color on white, I made the color come on a gray. So this is much better. But then the color now is too strong, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker and less saturated and a little bit darker i like the red color actually maybe even darker uh, okay the, no this red i like i'm gonna stick with that one one last thing we need to do the light is coming from that side so i'm gonna add uh, a curves adjustment layer make sure it's linked and i'm just gonna make it bright something like that and red i'm gonna add red yellow uh, the blue sorry the opposite of blue is yellow so yellow so now this layer is basically just bright red yellow but why i created this one so i can press ctrl i to make it invisible but then when i paint at any part with white it's gonna bring it back so i'm gonna paint oh it's uh, a hard brush i'm gonna press x paint again to delete x again so now whenever i paint 
it looks like the light it's okay if it's strong we can lower the opacity it looks like the light is hitting her from that side so you see now let's make it brighter and let's lower the opacity a little bit okay so now we have here let's group these let's call her our model and let's put her somewhere here something like that one thing we need to do is below the layer of the model we're gonna add a new layer make sure it's below the layer of the model I'm gonna call that shadow I'm gonna take a brush I'm gonna squeeze it down and move it in the direction of the shadow something like that this is how I like to create shadow make sure it's just the perfect angle and with a very low opacity just draw some strips of lines here and there many of them below the dress because the dress should be drawing a lot of shadow and several ones here several ones there and we're good to go let's see the shadow this is the shadow how we created it okay looks good for now let's uh, play around let's play around with light a little bit let's close all these for now okay here we have our sky on top of the sky i'm gonna add a new layer but we need it to be on top of this mountain also so mountain on left create a new layer make sure it's on top of it okay this layer i'm gonna go with a, like a, a brush or let's take this brush actually and let's take the orange color we're using and change it to overlay and i'm just gonna add some clicks here and there so we have some sort of like beams of light let me put this one actually on top oh it's gonna hit mountain on middle i need it to be on top of the path so on top of the path i'm gonna add a layer and using the brush i'm gonna like brush some light okay good i need the light to be looking like it's coming like from the hidden area this will make the eyes like complete the story usually when you, when people see this one for the first time their eyes go to this area then the light will like pull them to like the place they can't see behind okay on top of everything now i'm gonna color grade everything together i'm gonna create a new layer curves adjustment layer i always like to do that i pull the very black points up then start pulling this one down something like that and you can try this one make it like brighter light or dim the light i like a little bit brighter light something like that okay let's see the before and after very like nice effect you can reduce the opacity if it's too strong then i'm gonna jump to gradient map i have this one i saved it here as you can see it goes from like a dark blue to a little bit brighter cyan into red into orange into very bright orange let's move this one a little bit like that as you can see it looks of course horrible but if we lower the opacity still looks bad so what I like to do with gradient map you can either leave it normal with a very low opacity you see the difference it adds a tone or you can like change it to overlay but I like to do both so normal control J we have another copy this one is overlay and control J and the final copy is color uh, I don't think we need the color just these two and maybe increase the opacity of the overlay one so these two you see they added some like interesting colors to the photo and the colors made the photo blend even better together so these three you see the photo before these coloring and now after okay now we can also go to curves let's go to the red let's add some cyan in the shadows some red in the highlights let's go to the green i don't want green i want some magenta this is the magenta tone i really like the magenta tone in the photo and that's it you see the curves it added some like purplish color to the photo but i guess it's too strong in this area i like it in the sky i don't like it in this area so i'm just gonna take a brush and with the black color 
I'm just gonna brush it out from here. I don't want the purple to be here. I want it to be only on the sky. Okay, I always like to do this image, image rotation and flip horizontal. This shows you the like the image in a different way. When I did that, I just realized this part looks bad actually. It's really dark here. The sky, this one. Okay, so this one I'm just gonna brighten. Oh no. So I'm gonna take this one. The dodge, and I'm just gonna dodge this area. So it's important to flip your like canvas every while. I have it even in hotkey, it's control H. It shows you like the whole image in a different perspective. Okay. One more layer to make things more interesting. I'll put it on top of everything. Then I'm gonna use a, an overlay brush with a very low flow. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna use a normal brush and an overlay layer. In this case, I'm gonna sample a very bright red color and I'm gonna paint with it uh, actually I'll stick to orange and I'm gonna paint with it it's a little bit too strong I know but I'm gonna lower the opacity later I'm gonna paint just the highlights even the highlights in the sky the clouds Just whenever you believe the light should be hitting, you should paint. I'll add a lot of light like on top of her to attract the eyes to it. And this one, this one doesn't have any like highlights to it. Okay, let's see the before and after. You see we added some sort of like interesting light in the photo. This one. I just realized we have a problem with that one. Okay, if you're if you're having difficulty to click this one because it's clicking the layer on top, just press that lock button, then control click again. It will find it. But then you can't control click the light again. You press alt right click to bring it to that layer. But it's locked, so control click this one. This one is not a nice blend, so I'm gonna add a layer mask. I'm gonna take a brush and very small um, and very slowly, I'm just gonna erase a little bit of the parts below so it blends a little bit better. The same here again, a bit better, then a layer on top of everything with a very dark like color and I'm gonna squeeze it down something like that and let's see how it's gonna look like if we do that let's lower the opacity and let's pull some shadows from it like that Much better, but this is too strong, so I'm gonna use the eraser with a low opacity. And I'm just gonna make this one much smoother, something like that. This is much better blending. Oh, I see, you see this area? We have a problem here. Which layer is that? I can't decide. Oh, we're gonna like... Probably it's... Oh, okay. So I'm gonna clone stamp from here and add here. Clone stamp from here, add here. Okay. We had a missing like part in this uh, layers, So I just filled them out. Okay. Control H again. We have the different view. Let's make this part actually more interesting. Let's add a layer behind this one. Let's try something out. I don't know if it will work. I have this brush, it's some sort of flowers brush. So I'm just gonna sample a color from here and just paint with it like that. Let's sample this color and paint like that. Well, it doesn't work 
really nice, but it doesn't work. Okay, let's leave it for now. Uh, let's take an overall look. It looks really nice now. I really like it. We have this trail of light and the woman running to it. It like it tells a nice story. Okay, let's do more final adjustments. The final thing is Control Alt Shift, then press E. This will merge everything into a new separate layer, so you can go to Filter, Camera Row Filter. Okay. I will pick the brush or the radial filter. Let's stick to the adjustment brush. Make sure everything is zero. Like the adjustment brush, everything should be zero. Okay. And then I'm gonna just right click to make it smaller and bigger. I'm gonna increase and reduce the clarity a lot and a little bit of the haze redu reduction. This will make everything less clear and everything more hazy which is having more fog. So this I'm gonna use in the edges only. I want the edges to not be that sharp and I want them to have some fog on top of them. So now I'm clicking, I'm painting. You can have the mask and overlay to see what's happening, where it's, it's happening, sorry, not what, where it's happening, where it's taking place, here and there and here just on the edge and let's press ok see what it did you see what it did Control z Control z it made them like more faded much better let's jump again to camera row filter let's go to the fx module and let's dehaze everything make everything clear let's add some vignette this is like just uh, the black circle around but just very subtle effect and let's jump to this one uh, I guess mm, no that's not add clarity like this okay let's jump again to camera row filter this time I'm gonna use the brush but I'm gonna increase the clarity increase the dehaze add a little bit of exposure a little bit of contrast this is the opposite of fading the opposite of fading is making things clear so what I want to be clear in this photo is the model and I like the textures here on the rock let's make them even clear and this area of light and this area this area and maybe a little bit of this area here and let's press ok Control Z Control Z you see it made this area clearer you see it's much clearer now it's a little bit subtle we can do it even more camera row filter the brush again but I'm not gonna brighten nor contrast nor dehaze just clarity on the model and the light and this area. okay you see the before and the after much clearer now so now the eyes will even get attracted more here one more thing I realized we need to have some fog here and there add a new layer and using the brush just I'm gonna take any of my cloud brushes let's sample just any of this just with low opacity that's too strong I like to use like very different ones not the same every time and let's lower the opacity of this one and one final touch I'm gonna do is let's take the dodge and the highlights one click here one click or several clicks here to see this one dodged and I guess that's it for today's tutorial I really hope you enjoyed it was like a very lengthy tutorial I know a lot of information for you but make sure you download the photos in the description below follow along step by step I know it's gonna be hard in the beginning if you have any questions make sure you add them below and if you have any suggestions how can I improve the channel or if you need a specific tutorial in something make sure you let me know in the comment section below like the video and make sure you subscribe for more amazing content thank you very much